Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Mecha, it's Marco here and today we continue the work on this bad boy starting to slap some colors. I have already 98 giga of footage on this project and I'm still only in the middle of the process. I totally underestimate the work needed to edit a real-time recording on every step of this kind of paint job. Check the eye bags. But this experience is a good test for something that will become soon a new offer of the channel. Streaming incoming. Back on track, let's start from the first step of the second phase. Before painting, before priming, before planning the scheme, you need an idea and some good source of inspiration. This is probably the most important step of the whole process, and it all happens before even touching a brush. When I started the project, I knew only one thing. My model has to be radically different from the box art. The box art paint job is always a good reference to study and understand the new model, but the objective here is to create something original, and copying someone else's paint job isn't a very good idea. Especially like in this case, if you are competing with the genius of Francesco Farabi. This is definitely not a fair challenge. So, starting from this warm, Mad Max style desert setting, I decided to go to the other extreme and paint a cold winter scene. This decision sets a key feature of a paint job, the temperature of my main light and the general sensation of the scene. Check the video about light and contrast to expand the detailed reasoning around this topic and understand better the next steps. I still don't have a proper scheme, but I know that cold tones will be dominant, and this will determine the color of my main lights. At the same time, this decision automatically sets the tones of my shadows. To obtain a nice and interesting contrast, I know that my shadows will be warm. This can seem a small step, but is a huge thing in the planning of the model, that sets the basis for the basic visual interest of the paint job. Next step is to find references and set a proper mental image of the model. Never choose another miniature as reference. Your model will be only a dull copy of it. Use artworks, movie shots, screenshots from games or animation, but avoid other miniatures, trust me. When I think to post-apocalypse and snow, two things that I love pop instantly in my mind. Fallout, and I recently played a winter mod perfect to find some inspiration, and obviously Metro 2033. These are the references that I keep on the table during the whole process, and the last one in particular with the strong contrast of cold blue tones and uh, this warm yellow in the center will be my main guide. So now it's time to decide a balance scheme. Crossing my inspirations with the need of strong dominant cold tones, I decided to render all the mechanical parts as savage machinery from Voltec, painting them in their classic blue tones and yellow inserts. This choice matches perfectly my reference and needs, and this is not a surprise. These kind of things are created by incredibly talented artists, and you can't go wrong retro-engineering their creations. So, I'll play with these two main tones, enlarging the spectrum to the nearby colors, maintaining the sensation of a complementary scheme. A little disclaimer, I want to give you a lot of footage in a video with a reasonable length, so I speeded up the recording to create something that can be enjoyed in two different ways. You can just watch it as it is, as a fast step-by-step -step for an instant gratification, or you can slow down the footage catching more details and obtaining something like 10 times longer at its original speed. At least, this is what I planned and I hope it works and uh, I hope it makes sense. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell button and check the links down below in the description. And if you want to support the channel and my work, check the Patreon page and its rewards. Thanks a million, guys! With this stuff in place, it's time to start painting. I prime everything using my beloved Molotov Black in the airbrush. I decide the positioning and the diffusion of the main light, checking the box art and the base of the model to be sure about the main angle in which the model will be seen. I want a low, diffused, mid-morning cold light. I use liquid X white ink to set my sketch following this plan.
Here I prime the backpack boiler, and this is interesting because I apply the lights accordingly to its basic cylindric shape. For this same reason, Space Marines are great models to learn about volumes and the light behavior, because they are basically a bunch of simple cylinders and spheres. Then I go back to black to adjust, refine and define more the basic shapes of my shadows. After the sketch, I take pictures simply with my phone, and I record a couple of 360 of the model to have a future reference of this map. At some point, it's easy to lose sight of the initial sketch, and it's important to have a backup reference. I start working on the skin, preparing a bunch of different ink tones on my wet palette. I plan to paint this first use with the airbrush, to speed up the process, but mixing on the palette lets me understand better the tones and gives me more space and mixing freedom. I try three basic colors, and then I decide to mix a fourth one from them. I gently spray all the skin with this mix. At this point, I just let the underpainting to moderate the values of the basic tone. There will be time to add different tones to different parts and reinforce the different values. This is only the general, main hue of the skin. The objective here is to generate this kind of interesting silhouette in the main view. I mix a warmer yellowish tone and I spray it in the shadows, following the map of my value sketch, that is still showing through the first layer. I prepare a tone even warmer, adding reds and browns to render the idea that the skin of his back is burned by the intense heat of the boiler. I use pure violet to close the progression of the shadows. Violet is a great color to use in difficult situations like this one, because it's at the same time warm and cold, and its perception really depends on the surroundings and the colors nearby. Here violet will tie the shadows with the cold tones of the lights, still keeping the warm sensations of the dark areas. With the basic tones in place, I mix a very light uh, transparent turquoise, almost sky blue, to add cold saturation to my lights that are still quite white from the underpainting. With the same objective in mind, I spray some yellow azo in the shadows, but for some reason the camera didn't catch this step or more realistic, I didn't push the button. It was a very simple general filter in all the lower parts. Again, all this work is made to sketch general values and tones, set a general direction, and fix this kind of interesting illustrational silhouette. I'm sketching like when drawing or painting on a canvas or a wall, the medium is different but the approach and the mindset is the same. This gives me the space to fix and adapt the paint job, knowing how every part works with the others, and this is very important in large-scale models. Time for a new palette, this time with standard acrylics. I use the saturated military greens and hearth tones to mix a base color for the trousers. I'm looking for a mid-tone here, something greenish but neutral to balance and tie the tones of the skin and the strong colors that I plan to apply on the mechanical parts of the leg and the lower details. Again I spray every part of the trousers. This represents the actual color of the trousers, the basic hue without the influence of lights, shadows and reflections. Keeping it transparent, I get again a fast modulation of values from the underpainting. I insist a bit more on the shadows to make them more opaque, and fix this tone in what we can call the first shadow. Here the camera has captured one of the rare moments when I clean the airbrush. It's a beautiful but rare natural event that usually is too fast to catch or doesn't happen at all. Few drops of airbrush cleaner, a quick clean with a brush or a q-tip, and spray the excess. Everything ends in the blink of an eye. I use sap green ink to bring back some saturation in the general tone, staying away from the highest lights. 
As always, it's time for a huge thank you to my best patrons. Soon I'll need a second shot to thank you all. I love you guys. And pure Bart Amber to reinforce the shadows, with a darker value and a warmer tone. This is all I need for the moment of the trousers. They are a bridge between uh, strong focal points and I need to be ready to change them in a quick and easy way to better support the main areas. I paint the basic tone of the apron using the brush and Vallejo model color skin wash. It's called skin wash but it's a proper ink. I choose this warm yellowish orange because my objective here is to fix the warm tones of the deepest details. I have to do a lot of texturing work on this leather, modulating the lights with the texture. So this time I'm not starting from the mid-tone, but from the use of the shadows. I choose the brush to use to my advantage the classic negative features of this kind of paint, like I did for the rust effect on my iron golems. Check the video up here to know more about this. This ink dries fast, easily creates dark and light pools and irregular visible shapes around every drop and brush stroke. This sounds like something you don't want in your paints collection, but it's perfect to set all the random noise and movement typical of old dry leather. I add some turquoise to the skin to change the tone in something much, much colder and paint the other leather straps around the body. Here I'm preparing some simple turquoise straight from the bottle to paint the mechanical parts. It's a bit diluted with simple water but quite consistent. Here I want to achieve a precise effect and to obtain it I have to cover my value sketch. But here is not a big deal because I have pictures and videos to check it in later steps. I want to give the idea of old machinery covered in layers and layers of old paint. So, the thickness of the paint and the final texture has to deliver this look. Brush strokes, different consistencies and real physical textures of the paint have a meaning and a huge storytelling potential. Old scrap metal can't have the same texture and the same gentle refined brush strokes of a delicate skin. This is something that we have to use more in miniature painting. Here I applied some shading to the metal following my values map. I need a bit of color modulation before applying the distress technique that I'll show you in the next video. We'll have a lot of fun in the next one. And why not? I use a couple of coats of Contrast Basilicanum Grey to fix the tones of the black leather hat and military boots. It's more gentle than Templar Black and much easier to modulate in what you need. I use grey dark rubber from Panzer Aces, the Vallejo historical military line, to prime the tire in the shoulder pad. It's stupid but I love this simple color. It's a super super matte grey hue with a very particular tone and I always keep an extra bottle in the drawer. Back to the future with the shot where you can see some spoilers of what will happen in the next steps. But the key point here is the base work on the metal parts. I was in a point where I really needed to see the colors in their place, instead of white, to better understand the situation and plan the next moves, so I quickly mixed my dark escal metal with a lot of matte black to create a non-metallic metallic grey and fix a bit the look of those parts. Here ends the second part with all the basic work in place and all the vital reasoning and planning that are the foundations for a good paint job. Next week we'll see a bunch of special effects detailing and interesting advanced techniques. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. You can always ask me anything down below with a comment and follow my projects through the week using one of my socials. 
And if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon page and join the community. See you next week, guys.